Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. We're gonna do a get ready with me while also talking about influencer brands. Just like two days ago, we had another one launch and I definitely have some thoughts. We have a lot of stuff to get through, so let's just get started. All right, let's zoom you in so we can get ready together. Hello, up close and personal. So while I discuss these influencer brands, we're gonna get ready, we're gonna do a little makeup look. I have literally nowhere to go as usual, but we're just gonna get ready as if we do have somewhere to go. We all know that skin prep is really crucial for a makeup look, so I'm gonna start off with this one from Osea. This is the C Vitamin Boost. It's a toner. It's just going to add some hydration to my skin. So let's spray away. Spray just honestly just feels so good on the skin. And I'm following right away with this one from Good Molecules. It's a silicone-free priming moisturizer. This is like my moisturizer slash primer, even though we are going to reapply our sunscreen after this. So I don't know if it helps. All right. So we had Miss Nikki Tutorials drop a brand the other day. It is called Nimya and it is a skincare brand, a skincare brand from Nikki Tutorials. Now I definitely do not mind influencers, even makeup influencers coming out with a skincare brand. I don't mind it at all. I think we have some really good examples of what a good skincare brand is from like a makeup influencer. But I was just watching this launch video and I was so confused the whole entire time. Now, just as a disclaimer, I love Nikki Tutorials. She's an influencer, a content creator on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram. I watch every single one of her uploads. Every single time I see a video posted on YouTube by Nikki, it is one of the first ones that I go to because I just love her makeup looks. They're so creative. They're so unique. They're so beautiful. I feel like she doesn't necessarily review makeup all that much, but she does all these challenges and just such beautiful looks. I mean, I'm obsessed. So when I saw that she was launching a brand, I was so excited. I was expecting to see like a beautiful bright palette. I know she's obsessed with primer, so I was expecting to see like a really taggy primer. I know that's what she's known for. Also an eyelid primer. She always uses like the P. Louise base, I believe. I mean, there's just so many things that I think of when I think of Nikki Tutorials and skincare is not that. It's not that at all. By the way, to finish off with the skincare, I'm going to go in with the sunscreen. This is by Murad. It's a mineral sunscreen. It is a City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA of four pluses. I love this one. This is like quickly becoming like one of my favorite mineral sunscreens. It's definitely a little pricey, but wow, do I think it's worth it. This thing is so good and so comfortable on the skin. Three finger method as always. So when I was watching her launch video, one of the main reasons I was confused is because I honestly didn't feel like she really knew much about skincare. Even when she she was discussing the skincare ingredients that were in her products. She kind of read them off of the paper in front of her, which I don't think is the end of the world, but I just think like she didn't really understand what was brightening about her brightening serum. I just, I don't know. I don't feel like she was necessarily excited or really interested in skincare. If she was coming out with skincare products that were like related to makeup, which I think is what they were supposed to be, like a brightening serum is supposed to give you that like luminous glow to the skin. The moisturizer was supposed to be a moisturizer primer. All of these things were to like prep your skin for the makeup, but it was just kind of strange that the makeup just wasn't present when launching the brand. It honestly is giving me very much like Charlotte Tilbury vibes without the makeup being present, if that makes sense. Like Charlotte Tilbury has like an elixir serum. She has a moisturizer. She has some skincare products that I think really go well with the makeup products that are present, but it's just a little strange to see those makeup products come out first. And it's like, I think that's the direction that Nikki Tutorials is going in with this brand. It's like, I imagine that we're gonna see those makeup products show up at some point. Also this sunscreen, I literally cannot get over it. Makes the skin look and feel so good. This is such a good mineral sunscreen. So yeah, I was just ultimately confused by the launch. I just don't really understand why it's not makeup. I mean, I get why it's not makeup. I know that skincare is really a hot topic right now. I feel like it's even more of a hot topic than makeup. At one point, makeup was the driving factor behind beauty. The beauty industry was driven by these makeup brands and now we're seeing skincare brands and like an interest in skincare. Like skincare is such a hot topic and I think it was really the pandemic that did it. When people had nowhere to go and they just weren't wearing makeup, I feel like they just focused on their skin, which is amazing. I think that's an excellent thing and I was so excited to see that really happen. The excitement behind skincare is really exciting to me, but I'm afraid that some people, some influencers or celebrities are just like jumping on the bandwagon when not really understanding skincare when I think there's a huge difference between skincare and makeup. Like with makeup products, you never ever hear people talk about the ingredients in a makeup product. A lot of times if you're breaking out or you're irritated to something, you're really gonna blame your skincare, you're not gonna blame the makeup when really it's very similar there 
there are ingredients in makeup that are good and there's ingredients in makeup that are bad. There's fragrance in makeup. A lot of times we talk about that fragrance in skincare. We never once touch on it in makeup. And so I think when these beauty brands or these influencers or celebrities really gear towards skincare versus makeup, they're not taking those things into consideration. That yes, we may care about the packaging, we may care about the fragrance, we may care about all of that like sensorial aspect behind the product. Like that's cool and all, but what's the main focus here is the ingredients. And if the ingredients suck, then we don't want it. I'm someone that personally loves the sensorial aspect behind skincare, like the self-care aspect behind skincare. Fragrance, I'm not anti-fragrance at all. I really love the pleasant smell to my skincare. I love the way that skincare feels. I love the packaging. All of that is really important to me, but it's not more important than the skincare ingredients or what the skincare products do, you know? And I feel like that focus just isn't the same with makeup. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like Nikki's brand is focusing on like the vibes and stuff versus the actual ingredients that are present in the products, which should be the main focus for a skincare brand. I'm going to apply the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. I'm gonna use this to get that glow from within kind of look that we all know I love and adore. So yeah, I honestly felt like she wasn't really excited about the products and she really didn't understand the ingredients or what the products were supposed to do. She was reading the ingredients off of a piece of paper. The actual ingredients in the products are not that great anyways. Like the brightening serum, things that we would expect is like vitamin C. That's a skin brightening ingredient, like it's gonna brighten overall, but if you're looking for something to brighten any spots or a certain pigmentation in the skin, in. You know that we want to see like alpha arbutin, tranexamic acid, all of these ingredients, niacinamide, like none of these things were in there. I think the only thing that was in there was like pineapple fruit extract, which is a very mild exfoliant. And yes, that is going to brighten the skin a little bit. You know, it's just not like what we were expecting. And I know I'm speaking for everybody here, but it's not what I was expecting at all. Also like the photos and stuff on the website, I mean, nobody was even applying the products to their skin. They were wearing full faces of makeup. And I don't even mean like just foundation and like concealer and all that stuff, which is something that I feel like we see more than not. We see a lot of brands use like makeup to cover up any imperfections to sell their skincare products. We're used to it. I know we know it's real. In this case, they were wearing like full on like dramatic eye looks and stuff. Like I'll insert some photos here. It was just so extreme. And I was like sitting there like, what is happening right now? Like, why am I gonna buy a moisturizer when I see that you have a full face of makeup on? I don't see what the moisturizer is doing. I don't see it being applied to the skin. I don't see the texture of the moisturizer. Like you talked about it being like a marshmallowy type of texture. I couldn't get that. I couldn't get that at all from the launch video or the website. There was even like descriptions of certain ingredients like glycerin. They listed it as a classic moisturizer. Glycerin as a moisturizer. Okay. As you've seen here on this channel, by the way, I'm gonna go in with my glowish skin tint. As you've seen here on this channel, glycerin is a humectant. Humectants are a part of a moisturizer. Humectants are present in most moisturizers out there, especially glycerin. Glycerin's in like every single product. It's a humectant that draws in moisture from the environment into your skin. However, it is not a moisturizer. A moisturizer includes things like occlusive ingredients that lock in that hydration. Glycerin is just the thing that's gonna attract that hydration into your skin. It's a hydrator, not a moisturizer moisturizer. Again, yes, it is present in moisturizers, but it's not a moisturizer. So things like that, I was just like, do you even understand what you're talking about here? I'm sorry, this video seems so much more messy than it was supposed to be. Also, I really need to get the skin tint that's like my proper color. Here I am critiquing Nikki Tutorials and she would literally never have this issue. She would never have an issue like color matching herself. <laughs> I'm literally not hating on Nikki whatsoever. I would really love a brand from Nikki Tutorials. This just isn't the brand that I would think would come from her. And I'm just afraid that certain influencers are going to try and like hop on the bandwagon with the skincare trend versus focusing on something that they would really thrive in like Nikki Tutorials making a makeup brand, a palette, like anything like that. Oh my gosh, they would be so great. Like I just don't understand. I also can never get over this skin tint. I think this is so beautiful. I think my friend Rudy doesn't like it and I think what she was saying is it's probably better for those with dry skin. It can really show like texture and pores. So that's the only thing I think she didn't like about it. But I, on the other hand, am in love with this. I'm gonna touch up a little bit of my beard with this NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. You know this is a staple for me. I don't have too much to do. I did a little bit earlier, but I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit. I also don't want this video to just be a hate video for Nikki Tutorials and her new brand. Like there are so many different influencer brands out there. We recently saw launches from Hiram. We saw launches from Desi Perkins. I mean, let's talk about Desi Perkins and her brand, Desi Skin. And Desi has a couple different brands. She has the Desi Skin and she has the Desi Sunglasses brand, which I personally love the Desi Sunglasses. But I just kind of want to touch on that and 
and show the difference between Desi Skin and Nimia, which is the Naked Tutorials brand. Desi launched a vitamin C serum called Claro Cassis, and although I haven't tried it, I am extremely, extremely impressed by the ingredients list. I'm extremely impressed by the approach that she took when launching this specific product. I was just extremely impressed by this. Like, I would honestly pick this up whether it was by Desi Perkins or not. I really like Desi Perkins, so that makes me want to pick it up a little bit more. But everything about the product, everything about the marketing of it, it seemed really intentional. It seemed really thought out. It seemed really impressive. I mean, just launching a brightening serum, I mean, both Desi Perkins and Nikki Tutorials, both of these serums that they launched, they are brightening serums. However, with traditional brightening serums on the market, we're going to see one similar to Desi Perkins, not one that's similar to the Nimia brightening serum. And for a couple different reasons. Like I said, the Nimia one, it just has that pineapple fruit extract. It has a couple oils in it. So that is going to give somewhat of a glow to the skin, but it's nothing like this one that has a couple different forms of vitamin C as vitamin C derivatives, which I think is pretty impressive to note. Vitamin C derivatives. I mean, this is why I think it's so thought out. Vitamin C derivatives are being used by a lot of different brands for many different reasons. It's more stable than regular L-ascorbic acid, and it's less irritating to the skin. It's like less acidic than regular L-ascorbic acid. Vitamin C derivatives work for so many different people. There's not as many studies back behind those derivatives, but they are so impressive and I always recommend them. Vitamin C, even on my skin, and I'm very familiar with vitamin C, it can irritate my skin. It's just very acidic. The Desi Claro Cassis has ethyl ascorbic acid and tetrahexyl dexyl ascorbate. I think I said that right. But it also has, and I forget what she called it specifically, but I think it's like the Desi blend. It's like a mixture, like a blend of different fruit extracts that are really brightening to the skin. And I think they're really like taken from like fruits within like her culture and stuff. Like that's really thought out, not just throwing pineapple fruit extract into your serum and like that neon blue color and calling it like brightening. I'm going to go in with this blush from Pixie. It's the On The Glow Blush Tinted Moisture Stick and I have the shade Ruby. This is a new one to me. I'm really liking it. I don't really apply it straight to the skin. I use a brush and I just dab it and then I apply it. Another thing I really appreciate about the Desi Perkins serum is she talks a lot about having sensitive skin and using vitamin C. She talks a lot about what you shouldn't use vitamin C with. I mean, coming straight from the website. It is also important that you stop using all of their active ingredients like retinol, AHA, BHA, probiotics, and acids, including lactic acid and glycolic acid and salicylic acid too, as it can be overwhelming for sensitive skin when combined with powerful vitamin C. I mean, thank you. We definitely did not get that from Nikki Tutorials and her brightening serum. Just saying. I think other brands, they can really tell that there's a lot of thought put into those products. I mean, we can see that with Crave. We can see that with Hiram's brand. We can really see that with Monday Born by Tenny. Also, I just put on way too much blush. Surprise, that always happens. But like all of these brands, it really makes sense. It doesn't look as pigmented in person as it does on camera, but I guess it looks really good from like straight on. Oh no, maybe that is good. I don't know. We're just going to go with it. I think Hiram's brand really makes sense. Like all of the products really make sense. The salicylic acid, the mandelic acid, the niacinamide. With Monday Born, I can see so much intention and thought put into that brand. I mean, it is so impressive. I'm going to talk a little bit about that brand in the next video. We're going to be reviewing their cleansing duo, but there was so much thought put into the ingredients that are included. There's lactic acid, niacinamide, there's centella asiatica. Those are powerhouse ingredients. Even the way that Tenny decides to put out her products, like to launch her products. I don't know this like word for word, but I believe the brand only launches like specifically at certain drop times. And that's just a way for them to fight against like those products sitting on the shelf for like an extremely long period of time where the effectiveness and the efficacy of those ingredients really dies down a little bit. So for them to launch it at those certain times, you can really guarantee that you're getting the best out of those certain ingredients. I mean, it's really impressive. I'll like link all the videos down below. Every single time I hear her talk about the brand, I'm just like, wow, you really love this brand. You can tell that people like Tenny listened to the conversations that are going on in the skincare community. You can tell that she's invested and she's involved in it. I think with Desi's brand and Tenny's brand, you can really see the thought. You can really see how invested they are in their products, in skincare, in their brand as a whole. Like, it's really impressive. You can see that with Hiram's brand, Self is by Hiram. You can see Naturium with Susan Yara. I mean, Susan Yara, it's pretty much driven by ingredients specifically. I mean, which obviously makes sense. She's a big skincare influencer here on YouTube. But with that brand also, that one's really innovative too. Can I also shut up and like continue my makeup? With Naturium, you can honestly see like innovation. We have certain things like azelaic acid, azelaic acid emulsions. They just launched like a half step, like clay mask, I believe it is. A clay mask that doesn't dry down and you can use it in between your oil cleanse and your regular cleanser. Like that's a product we don't have on the market right now. We have certain things like retinal creams, retinal oils, retinal serums. Like you can get everything that you need out of that brand. They use encapsulated ingredients too. Like it's innovation and it's thought and it's time put into the brand. And it's an understanding of what skincare is and what the consumers want. Do you get what I'm saying? As I pack on this blush, I use too much. If ever I use too much, which is literally every single day, I take a little bit more of my skin tint and I just go like 
like around the perimeter of where I applied that blush. And it just kind of like tones it down a little bit. I mean, I do this every single day. I better have a trick for it. I mean, do you guys get what I'm saying? Even like, let's talk about Crave Beauty. Crave was started by Leah Yu. There is intention and there is like a philosophy behind that brand. Crave is a brand that really pushes like gentle yet effective skincare. There's a lot of notice taken into K-Beauty. I mean, they are considered a K-Beauty brand. I think they're based here out of New York, I believe like New York and South Korea, but I believe Leah is from South Korea. See how that just tones it down so much. It still gives like that flush of color, but it just makes it a little more doable. I mean, there is thought and time put into that brand. There's a reason so many people love Crave and there's a reason so many people love Hiram. I mean, obviously everybody loves Nikki Tutorials, but I don't think they love her for her skincare knowledge. You get what I'm saying? And I think if you were to come out with a skincare brand, it's really crucial that you really try and understand the skincare space. And you try and understand what the consumers want out of skincare. You try and understand the conversations that are happening in skincare. And if you want these products to be like makeup and skincare hybrids, I feel like you just should have started with the makeup. I'm gonna put a little bit of blush right on the bridge of my nose. This just gives like that little sun-kissed look. And of course I put too much on. So let's talk about a couple brands that honestly you forget are influencer brands because they are so good and they are so thought out. Let's talk about Huda Beauty and M Cosmetics. I would honestly bet you that so many people out there don't consider Huda to be an influencer anymore. Her brand is huge. And I would say same thing with M Cosmetics. I mean, Michelle Phan, we think about her and yes, we think influencer, but I think we just think about her as an influencer because she's like the OG influencer. But I think right now her brand is so established that she's no longer just an influencer to me. She is a brand owner and I think M Cosmetics has a great line that it like stands alone outside of like the umbrella of Michelle Phan, if that makes sense. A little bit of bronzer. This is Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. This is newer to me. This is like one of the first like powder products that I've tried. And I feel like overall I'm liking it, but sometimes I feel like I just don't really know how to use it. And I know it seems simple, just put your brush in it and like wipe it on your face. But I don't know. It's really showing how inexperienced with makeup I am. Honestly, I would say that M Cosmetics is actually a pretty good brand to kind of like compare the Nikki Tutorials brand to because I feel like that is supposed to be like a skincare makeup hybrid type of brand. You know, Michelle Phan, she really focuses on the ingredients of these products and I think she really speaks really well to it. You know, Michelle Phan, what does this smell like? I don't know. It's not bad necessarily. Okay, whatever. But yeah, so Michelle Phan's brand, it's really like a makeup skincare hybrid. I mean, there's like serum blushes and I think those serum blushes have like good skincare ingredients. I don't know how much benefit you're getting from those skincare ingredients because it's like layered on top of everything. I mean, the makeup should be going over your like moisturizer, your sunscreen, any oils that you have on the skin. So I don't know how much benefit you're gonna get from those ingredients, but it's nice to see them. It's nice that there's like thought behind those ingredients. I'm just trying to like brush up here to really give me that bronzy look, but sometimes Sometimes I feel like with bronzer, I really don't see it too much. And then all of a sudden I have way too much on. But I think that's kind of nice. I also sometimes can't really tell if I'm seeing my blush or I'm seeing my bronzer. So there's that. And also let's take a look at the Huda Beauty brand and not only Huda Beauty, but also Wishful, which is her skincare line. Yeah, let's take a look into that. So with Huda Beauty's line, I mean, Huda Beauty, they have so many products. I mean, I think of Huda Beauty and I think of just the makeup line. I don't think of her as an influencer at all. She has a lot of amazing products that a lot of people are obsessed with. The foundations, the palettes, is that it? I don't think that's it. There's also like the eyebrow pencil and like the setting powder. I mean, people are obsessed with Huda Beauty products. I personally haven't tried many. I've only tried that skin tint, which I think is so, so amazing. But when we get into her skincare line, let's talk about that. I can clearly see more thought and attention being put into Huda Beauty versus Wishful Skin. Wishful Skin, I'm actually trying a couple products right now. I'm trying their peptide serum and their rosehip oil. Not saying they're bad products whatsoever, but I can just see that there's more thought and attention put into the makeup versus the skincare for a couple different reasons. There are certain products like the Yoglo one. Again, not a bad product whatsoever. It was just kind of marked marketed weird because they're really marketing it as like it's taking off all of your dead skin cells, which yes, kind of it is, but that's not like what you're seeing when you're massaging it onto your skin. It was just like marketed really strangely. And I think also like the chin strap, you know, like these kind of like gimmicky things, not bad things necessarily. I just feel like there wasn't as much thought put into these products or really like thought driven behind these products as to like why she's dropping these specific products. You know, rosehip oil, sure, we all love. Peptide serum, amazing. I think that's the better way to go. Chin strap or like that exfoliating, like like scrub thingy that she came out with. Like, I think they're a little gimmicky. I feel like there's just more love and attention put into her makeup. The palettes, the different types of foundations that she dropped, there's just a difference. It seems like really professional, really thought out makeup line and a little like half-assed with the skincare. I just don't think the skincare is there yet where the makeup is there, it's been there. There's a reputation behind it because of how good the products are. Do you get what I'm saying? With Nikki, it would just make more sense to drop the makeup. Just like with Huda, it makes more sense for you to drop the makeup. I know sometimes skincare and makeup go 
go hand in hand, but it just seems like that makeup is gonna be your driving factor. You get what I'm saying? Also, just a little bronzer on the nose. We're gonna do the eyebrows. I'm going in with this NYX The Brow Glue. So honestly, overall, I am not against these influencer brands. I'm really not. I actually feel like a lot of thought and love is gonna be put behind these brands, especially certain brands like Naturium and Crave and Hiram's brand. Like I honestly expect better products from these influencer brands, the influencer skincare brands, than I do like L'Oreal or Olay or Neutrogena, you know? Although those are gonna be great products, I just feel like there's a higher expectation for these influencers, especially when comparing like like celebrity brands, I don't expect anything from celebrity skincare brands. Nothing at all. And when they deliver good products, I am very surprised because honestly, that just seems like a fast cash grab to me. So yeah, I'm definitely not against these influencer brands. I'm actually here for them. I just think we do hold them to a higher expectation and we need to see intention. We need to see thought. We need to see love put behind these brands. And I think we have some really great examples of what these influencer brands should be. And so that's why when people like Nikki Tutorials, who I absolutely love and adore, when someone like her drops a skincare brand, I'm gonna hold it to a really high standard and I'm really gonna critique it. I'm gonna set my skin with this Rare Beauty Setting Spray. Celebrity brand, not influencer. I do find that there's a difference. Just a quick spray. Ah. Last step, I'm gonna give my lips some color. I'm going in with the Glossier Bomb.com. This one's in Cherry. This just gives a very like slight red look to the lips. Honestly, I'm surprised I feel this opinionated about the brand, mainly just because I haven't even tried these products. You know, I can't speak to the effectiveness of these products because they aren't even launched yet. I haven't tried them. You really can't critique a product until you've tried the product. So really what I'm critiquing is just the brand and the brand just doesn't really make sense to me right now. As I said, I feel like we have some really great examples of what influencer brands should be. We have Tenny, we have Desi, there's Susan Yars, Naturium, there's Hiram's brand. These brands where you can see so much intention behind them. You know, around influencers, I feel like we tend to see more controversy, especially with the drops of these brands. You know, we saw people critiquing Susan Yars brand. We saw people critiquing Hiram's brand. Even Crave had a controversy this past year and people were really attacking not only the brand, but Leah herself as an influencer. So yeah, there's certain things that just happen with influencers, but I think these brands really, there's some that you see thought and love put behind and others, there's just like confusion and you're like, why is this the brand that you chose? I mean, there's so many influencers and there's so many different types of brands. There's like Kathleen Lights with her nail polish. I love Kathleen Lights and I'm really looking forward to trying that nail polish. It looks so good. There's Katie with her clothing line, 30 years. I've tried that. I have one of the shirts and I really do enjoy that. Jackie Ina with her candle company. I mean, there's so many, but with all the ones I brought up here today, I feel like there's intention and there's thought behind those brands. Even Kathleen Lights and her nail polish or Jackie Ina and her candles. I feel like it makes sense. Somehow, like they did a really good job with those brands. I just don't really get or understand Nikki Tutorials his brand just yet. So I know this is like fresh new news. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know down below. I'm really interested. Let's have a conversation about this. Obviously you've heard my thoughts here today, but I'm really interested to know yours. I just love influencer. This isn't like drama, like not influencer drama. It's just something that's like exciting and new that's happening in the beauty space. So let me know your thoughts down below. All of these brands, all the products used here today, they're gonna be listed down below. All of the information about these brands, their websites, their Instagram pages, all of it's gonna be listed down below. Before you go, make sure to subscribe and like this video. Join the family over here. We talk a lot about skincare. We talk about makeup. We talk about everything. We'd love to see you join. Thank you all so much for being here and hanging out with me and I will see you all soon. Bye guys. Bye.